Hello and welcome to the Audio Time Capsule episode 15. I'm comedian Simon Kane, and for those of you new to the show, this is the podcast where I bring on a guest, get them to leave 20 questions and then a year later bring them back on to answer them. I then edit it so they're talking to their past selves. All past voices will sound like this and all future voices will sound like this. To give you a idea of how the show is structured, here is a question that I left myself before this week's guest arrived to leave their questions. Hey Simon, you've got a podcaster coming on this week. What is your current favourite podcast? What are you listening to consistently at the moment? And have you managed to listen to a whole series since this time? Because I know that you tend to start podcasts and then just duck out and don't bother finishing a lot of them, which is fine but it just means you've got a lot of downloaded episodes that you'll never get to it's like having a bookshelf on your phone all the time reminding you that you never finish things have you finished the series and what are you listening to uh, <laughs> fuck you past me i have okay so i'm still working my way through the black tapes i really like the black tapes podcast i think it's really well put together i think the ads are getting a bit out of control so i sort of stopped listening because of that uh what am i really enjoying i'm still enjoying the parapod i think the parapod is amazing i'm still enjoying unexplained and looking forward to series three of that uh unexplained is the podcast of richard mclean smith who is the guest for this week and what else have I been enjoying? There's no... I'm still looking for a really good podcast on sex, sexuality, and serial killers. Uh, not not all in one. Like I'm looking for those specific subjects. I, I sort of am really interested in hearing more on those subjects, and I don't really find that much on it. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of sort of unsolved things and uh, conspiracy theories and stuff. And I suppose the Parapod covers a lot of that. Um, but obviously it's stopped now, so... There's not enough new content there for me. But yeah, I I wish there was more of that that I enjoyed. Because the ones I've heard I don't really like. But yeah, as for have I finished the series? I've not. I've started about eight. And I just, I don't know, I binge on them and then I get bored. And then I move on to another one, which is the beauty of content these days. But I know it's not helpful for most creators, including myself. So um, let's move on. Let's start the episode. Today's guest is, as I said a second ago, Richard McLean Smith. He runs a podcast called Unexplained, which takes an unexplained story and tells it to you in a really compelling manner. Um, he also is a musician and a composer and works on all the music on the podcast, which means that sort of everything's put together in uh, one place and it's really just well done. Like, I really like the way that he does it and it's sort of made me want to do my own storytelling podcast and, and put something together and maybe even work with him on the music. Or, or something like that um yeah but let, hey simon let's let's focus on this podcast and your other one rather than trying to start a third uh, shall we i'm really excited to hear how these questions go i know what he's left himself and i know that he has forgotten those much like every guest so um without any more delays we'll jump into the episode if you're new here please do remember to hit that subscribe button if you're old here please do remember to give us an honest ideally positive review in itunes and either way please do join the facebook group it's called the audio time capsule and it's on facebook obviously but now without any more delays let's open the audio time capsule of Richard McLean Smith. My name is Richard McLean Smith. The day is January the 31st, 2017. We are in the bunker of a building in Race Street, London. Um, I'm feeling good about the project. I'm feeling... Uh, okay, no, I'm feeling nervous about it. I'm feeling nervous about my time capsule. <laughs> I, I don't know. How, what I want to say is... okay. I'm feeling apprehensive about my time capsule because I feel like I'm going to put a lot of things um, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of things ahead of me for the next year and uh, if I haven't fulfilled them I will either feel guilty in retrospect or um, yeah I, if I haven't achieved them yeah I'll feel like a, a guilty failure in retrospect. Hello I'm Richard McLean Smith it's the 11th of February 2018 and I'm currently on the top floor of the Bill Murray pub in Islington. And I'm feeling uh, nervous about answering my own questions, um, which I can't even remember, um, from a year before. So Richard, your podcast Unexplained, about a year ago you were just kicking off with season two, but I seem to remember having quite big ambitions for season three. Were you able to achieve them? <laughs> 
So I just have to remember that Joseph Citro may have been on the verge of dying at the time when I, when I was asking myself the question. Right. Well, um, yes, it's interesting. I haven't found out actually um, about uh, Joseph Citro's health. Um, I was just talking about the end there. The uh, I think to explain a bit more. Um, I had I have a plan for uh, a podcast season. Um, or a season of my podcast, rather, uh, that I still can't explain what it is exactly because it's, uh, it's supposed to be this kind of, well, not really a surprise, but I don't want to give anything away before I do it. Um, but it, in order to do it, it involved, um, at one point I was hoping I was, be able, I was going to be able to speak to this person called Joseph Citro, and uh, um, I found out that he was quite ill um, when I managed to get hold of him and since then and now this is over a year now since then i've i've not been able to hear from him again i'm slightly worried that he might have passed away but uh the answer is i don't actually know whether he has or not uh but it as a sort of broader answer to that question the those big ambitions are unfortunately still just ambition since um a couple of things have 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 got in the way of me doing that uh season so i'm going to be returning to this sort of familiar unexplained for the next season and the one after that will be the more ambitious project um, we hope so Richard I think um, is right in saying that one of the most exciting things that that has come out of doing the podcast unexplained is the possibility that you might be able to develop it into a TV show right. I remember thinking a year ago that the only thing that stood in the way of that was you not being good enough to do it so how far did you get with that were you able to put a good idea together and is anybody interested in buying it right this is another um I, i'm slightly concerned that they're all going to take this uh this um path um the answers the, i so that's still a possibility very much so but um again hasn't quite um come to fruition but i would say not because of my own ineptitude um i th- I'm, I'm confident that i can do it but um I, uh, something else has come up uh, or something else came up um, which I think might be the subject of a, a, a later question um, so let's see what I get asked in the second so I remember just before you put out the second series you were asked if you were interested in, in doing a sort of book adaptation of the, of the podcast and I think the idea appealed to you because of the sort of slightly pretentious idea that it would be good to write a book but it also felt a little bit like too much hard work at the time because you wanted to do something a bit more interesting than just a straightforward adaptation. Did you take the lazy option or did you find an interesting way of putting a book together that did justice to your pretentious ideas? Um, now, well, what I would say first of all that um, any now having done it or uh, having sort of almost completed the process of writing a book, um, uh, I don't think any version of any, of any book that's ever been written could probably be described as a lazy um, process. Uh, it was uh, it uh, it was very very uh, involving and very and quite difficult. Um, so I hope I've made something that people will at least find interesting. Um, I can't remember what I can't actually remember what I was referring to when I when I said that it would be a particular. The book would be a the, there would be a particular approach to it, but um, I think what I would say is that uh, it's a I think a more substantial sort of approach to the stories and the, and the ideas that I explore in the podcast. Um, I think as such as a book warrants really. So um, I I can't remember the end of the question actually. Was there a, have I even answered it? Um, I think um, I think that covers I think that covers what you are asking me. Did you finally finish? <laughs> uh, this is not even funny. I'm just laughing at my, myself. Um, uh, laughing at me. On the subject of uh, the books, but a different book. Have you finally managed to put together a first draft of the book that you started five years ago? No, that's a, an absolute no, um, and it's a no because the the actual real book that I'm writing, um, as I said previously, uh, was incredibly involving and um, I've had no time to do anything else and I don't know if that's because I'm particularly slow or if that is just the nature of the beast as it were so um, no I haven't I'm, I'm looking forward to starting it though when I when I finally 
um, finish this other one. Is your girlfriend still putting up with you? Because you and I both know that I spend all my time doing stuff like this instead of her. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I feel it would have been easier for her. Um, either sitting in a basement on your own or at a laptop on your own or in your own head trying to think up things. Is your girlfriend still okay with that? Um, my girlfriend is still with me. I don't know if she's still okay with it. Um, she's incredibly supportive, so um, she's hiding it well if she's not, I would say. I mean, the funny thing is, I because uh, I think primarily because of the book, actually, and we recently moved house, so um, I. the funny thing is, even though I now work mostly from home, in fact, completely from home, uh, I've seen even less of her um, since... <laughs> So yeah, she's uh, she's had quite a tough time of it. Finally, I seem to remember when you were a year younger, back in 2017, that you were in the process of trying to buy a flat and it had just fallen through. And I think you thought that you might never sell the flat now because of Brexit and people were going to get freaked out by those sort of things. Did you find a flat in the end? Where do you live now? I did find a flat, um, as I just told you. Um, but... I uh, just realising it's now how self. I mean, I suppose they are self-involved questions because I've interview interviewed myself, but um, I, I don't know if these are going to be very interesting for people to listen to. Um, the the answer again is yes. I did find a flat. Uh, we did find a flat myself and my girlfriend, and we've moved to um, a very nice part of uh, sort of northeast London, I suppose. Um, uh, I never want to say exactly where it is. <laughs> I don't, I'm concerned that I might... I don't know, the weird thing is having a, a book... I don't, and I, sh, I, sh, I don't know if this makes any difference because, I don't know, I mean, more people might listen to the podcast than, than might ever read the book, but I, but somehow having a book makes it feel more... The potential of it being a book makes it feel more real in a way that I get nervous if anybody finds something in it that they dislike, that they might um, track me down and... Uh, and let me know about it. So um, I won't say exactly where we've moved to. But I, I mean, it's stupid saying that because it's it's on my website, so you can you can read it there. So Richard, uh, you've recently got yourself a second cat, and I remember I remember you thinking a year ago that if you could have as many as you could possibly fit in the house, <laughs> that you would. Did you buy any more? We haven't bought any more. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> we haven't. We haven't bought any more, um, and uh, when I say bought, I would, I mean, ideally, obviously, you should always take a rescue cat, but our first cat we did actually buy, um, but our second was a rescue cat, and I think in future, if we were going to do that again, we, if we were going to get any more, we would hopefully, there would be rescue cats too, but um, I would, so we haven't got a third one, but uh, we have talked about it a lot, and we would both like to get one. Um, I think the, the the next thing is what we'd really like to do is have a place big enough or you know just some I don't know it's a bit of a pipe dream but uh, having a sort of a farm type scenario where we could have any and as many uh, animals that we could possibly have so uh, <laughs> again I don't know how possible that is but um, uh, the short answer is at the nearest available juncture we will get more cats is your dad still being annoying? I was dreading this one coming up because I remembered... It's the only one I could remember that I'd asked myself um, uh, from last year. And uh, it sounds very harsh now, having it uh, repeated back to me. But just to qualify to my dad, who might listen to uh, this show, uh, it, it was... Obviously, that was... That question is wholly out of affection. Um, and it was more to do with the fact that he had recently sort of semi-retired and um, so needed uh, uh, he needed to, to speak to me more often than he would have perhaps otherwise done. And uh, now he has a new job, so he's actually not calling so much. And uh, I miss him. Looking back over the last 12 months, what has surprised you the most and what lesson did you learn from it? Okay. Um... I, don't, I think I'm just because I'm sort of so all consumed by um, writing this book. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but I'm writing a book, and uh, um, so I would say that that has was the process of that. I I always 
thought that would be a difficult process, but I think it's been maybe more difficult than I had imagined. I think just the sort of, I don't know, it's the first one I've done, I suppose. So there's a lot of, I've put a lot of weight on my own. So sort of, there's a lot of expectation I put on myself um, that I do a good job with it. And it's very difficult since it's not, you know, you not working traditional hours, you know, any any minute you're not working on it feels like you're, you know, potentially not making it the best that it can be. So I think that over a prolonged period of time is quite stressful. Um, but at the same time, it, you know, it's a huge luxury to be able to, to, to do that with the hope that it might eventually make it to the shelf and people might even buy it. Um, so I've learned that. I've learned that writing a book is difficult um, and stressful. And um, what else have I learned? Um, I'm sure there's more. I'm sure I've learned something else. Um, uh, let's know. I don't. Maybe I haven't. Maybe that's all I've learned. Um, and um, I can't think. Oh God! See, this is the sort of question you need to have a bit of preparation for. I want to say something profound. I don't want to just throw it out there that I've learnt um, that my cat isn't very really good at learning to go to the toilet again after moving house. Um. Let's imagine that you can go back to the original record day, it's 31st of January 2017. What questions would you take out and what would you replace them with? Hmm. I would... Um, I think I don't know. I'd, I'd take out the questions that were... Oh, I suppose that's the point of the... The purpose of it is to is to almost predict what how things are going to turn out in the future. But um, I think I'd like to get to the point where I feel like I'm actually, um, you know, not worried so much about what I am supposed to be achieving and actually just kind of uh, enjoy the process of what I'm doing. Because, um, I've yeah, I mean, I've been, as I said before, been very lucky to, in the last few months, be able to kind of have the opportunity to to write full time um, for the time being, at least anyhow. And um, I think the funny thing is, in my head, I'd always assumed um, that I'd have a bit more sort of control over my life in a way. But it, but actually, the reality is that you end up giving up more of it over to that. And uh, um, actually, I actually can't remember what I was going to say about that. So I don't want to say I don't want to say anything that makes it sound like I'm getting a bit more morose with my answers so yes no I would like to take out the questions that are I think putting too much putting unnecessary expectation on myself about um, what I have and haven't achieved because frankly there are more important things in life um, but also I think um, I've probably done as much as I would like to have hoped to have been able to do in the last year and, and now listening back to those questions it feels like I haven't done uh, half of what I was supposed to be doing anyway um, so yeah I think that's I'd probably go back and change that. But I'm, I'm just thinking, have I, I've always been answering the questions thinking that it's related to the podcast, but actually it could be anything to do with my life. Uh, maybe I should do them all again. I mean, I should answer them all again. All right, maybe I can switch it up now. So Richard, was there anything in the year that's just passed um, that you turned down or said no to that you uh, wish you hadn't? I'm trying to think. I think um, I... If anything, probably saying yes to too many things and not being able to do it. But actually, uh, again, it's sort of it all. It ties back to having done this book. I've just really been under a rock for the last sort of six or seven months, and um, you know everything has sort of been dictated by that. So I haven't actually been able to, you know, haven't actually had the time to be able to do other things that I'd like to have done, um, and. I'm hoping that I think um, I will, um, uh, having when I've finished it, have a bit of time to catch up on things. Uh, I spend some more time with my girlfriend, uh, more meaningful time, um, and uh, you know, actually be able to have a kind of bit of headspace to sort of come comprehend other things that are going on other than um, my own thing, my own work. So yeah, Richard. What do you remember from the last year that makes you the most happy? The last year. <laughs> um, can I 
really struggling. It's just struggling because I, again, I feel like all I've seen is a desk, uh, you know, whatever rubbish on the internet um, that you come across. It makes me most happy. Um, I would say actually, no, what genuinely made me happy was, um, and this is a very complicated, complex uh, sort of point or idea, really. But it's it's not uh, not specifically the you know because of you know whether you're a Republican or a Democrat in America. But there was the result in. Alabama, I believe, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, I think it was Alabama, a result in Alabama, um, a local election that was won by a Democrat against all the odds. Um, and I think it just, there was a sort of slight release of the pressure valve of, of the sense of something becoming um, too, uh, something going too far that, Again, it's a very complicated point. I'm going to, I think I try and allude to it a bit in the book, but um, just this idea that a lot of people are kind of, uh, I think, becoming a little bit unsettled by the idea of old sort of established orders being challenged and um, and and in some ways becoming um, redundant. Um, and I felt like there was, in that moment, there was a feeling that there was, there is a sort of system underneath in a good way that has so far managed to resist um, sort of, it's sort of resist it sort of um, the idea that it might no, no longer be necessary. And there was in that moment sort of a feeling that uh, there was some kind of something to sort of hold on to um, amongst all the chaos, if that makes sense. I know that I haven't really uh, articulated that very well, but yeah, I think th- there was. I don't know. I found that I found that quite a quite a stirring moment when I sort of woke up the next morning and I and I found out that that was the result. Um, and yes, any uh, I think I'm trying to think of something specific, but um, um, any time I think that my governor's managed to get me away from my laptop and and for us to actually have some time together, we we had it. We spent quite a nice day making a big snowman um in the park uh, that um i was very proud of i don't know if she felt the same way oh well, thank you that's great thank you very much for taking the time to answer my questions um i hope you wish you all the best for the future no problem at all it's yeah great to speak to you too um i've uh, been looking forward to meeting you for a while so uh it's good to finally have the pleasure yeah all the best to yourself That was Richard. I loved hearing about how one big project can just be all-consuming and all-encompassing and just sidetrack your life, but in a really good and positive way. And although he was very wary of sort of just saying the same thing again, like sort of in some answers, I think that's valid. I think sometimes... um, I wouldn't say unfollowing your dream because that's sort of a weird way of looking at it, but I think sometimes going with an opportunity, especially when it was unexpected, but is something you want to do, is important in life. And I think it's very easy for us to just see a goal and to keep working towards it and not realise that the goal is an endpoint and life is about a journey. So if you're always working towards an endpoint, you're actually not enjoying the journey. And so something like a book that comes up or something like, I don't know, an opportunity to do a live show or, or you know, something something a bit interesting that still gets you there but moves you in a slightly different direction it's really important in life and and it was great to hear how that worked for him and I'm really excited about hearing the book to be honest with you I'm really hoping he does it as an audiobook although he did say to me that he's probably only going to be a hardback and a paperback which is great but as I said very early on in the podcast I have a bookshelf of books that I haven't got through and that I need to and I don't really want to keep adding to it. So if it was a podcast, I'd probably get it. Uh, podcast, an audio book, I'd probably get it. If it's, a, if it's a hardback, I'll probably get it. And then read it, but slowly, which is uh, unhelpful. If you're interested in buying the book in whatever form it comes out in, I will put links to everything in the show notes. Please do go and support him. Please do check out his podcast. Please do also listen to some of the other podcasts I suggested at the start. Also, if you have any suggestions for other podcasts, please do 
let me know them like just join the facebook group and give me a dm or something like that or tweet me at this made me cool i'm always looking for new and interesting podcasts and if you do one and you would like me on it or you would like to um suggest it to me i would love to hear it especially on the subjects of unexplained things conspiracy theories um sex and sexuality those are kind of my four main interests beyond comedy and the and other obvious things that i do uh, at the time of releasing this series three of unexplained has just started coming out and i'm really enjoying it so i would definitely recommend that i'm actually running around doing previews at the moment of my new show it's called sex drugs and other things i never do there will be a link in the show note if you're enjoying the show and you'd like to support me in any way please do consider coming down to one of the previews if they're near you or if you can just get to it also i'm going to be at the edinburgh festival with that show it's on at 6 p.m it's in the grass market at the nova and it's every day except Wednesday when I get rudely awoken by the dustman. If you can make it, there's also a link to that in the description. And then I'm on tour. And if you would like information on that, there will be a link in the show. Basically, check out the show notes and support me in any way you can. If you can't come and physically see me or, or see a show, if you're new here, please do hit that subscribe button. If you're old here, please do remember to give us an honest, ideally positive review in iTunes. And either way, maybe consider giving a donation to the show and helping me finance this and keep the show alive you can do that as a one-off on my website which is simonkane.co.uk via paypal or you can become a patron at patreon.com where you can donate on a per episode basis of the show from one dollar do you think this is worth a dollar do you think all the episodes you've had so far are worth something please do contribute if you can the audio time capsule is a fruit that got in gravity's way production for the internet all elements were created by me comedian simon kane thank you very much for listening thank you very much for subscribing and thank you very much for rating and donating if you do. I'll see you all in about 14 days time. Bye!